Hey guys, I got a question for you. Is it right to judge people? Someone said the other day, don't judge me because the Bible says that you should not judge. So what if someone kills your brother, your sister, your child or your father, somebody in your family? What if they kill them? Should you just keep silent or should you judge and say it is wrong to murder? Hmm. Well, what if you judge someone, but you didn't see the whole picture and you judged them wrongly? What then? You see, it gets interesting when we really think about it a little bit deeper. So let's go to the Bible and let's see what it says about judging others. Let's get to the video. Now, just very quick, if it's your first time here on my channel, I want to welcome you to DLM Christian Lifestyle. I'm Daniel, and if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so you won't miss any of the next videos. So, what does the Bible say about judging others? Well, let's go to the first verse. Matthew 7, verse 1 to 5. Judge not that you be not judged, for with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye? And look, a plank is in your own eye, you hypocrite. First, remove the plank from your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Okay, so this message is very, very clear, right? But why do so many people still disagree when it comes to judging people? Because humans are sinful and they twist certain verses and certain passages to fit in with their lifestyles. So what does this verse say? It says, judge not, not until you looked at yourself first, your sin, the sin in your own life, that blank that is in your own eye. And then if you fix that first, if you remove it, then you'll be able to clearly see what's going on in the other person's life. And you need to know there's a huge difference between judging someone religiously, oh, you shouldn't do this, and yeah, no, no, between that and helping someone through the Holy Spirit. Look at John 8, verse 1 to 11. But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Now early in the morning, he came again into the temple, and all the people came to him, and he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and Pharisees brought to him a woman caught in adultery. And when they had set her in their midst, they said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what do you say? This they said, testing him, that they might have something of which to accuse him. You see, the Pharisees were very religious and their zeal for the religion made their hearts very hard. So they easily judged someone. They had no real relationship with God. You see, God wants a relationship. He didn't create religion. Religion is man-made. This is how Paul was when his name was Saul. His religion made him a vicious man that hunted down and killed Christians. And he judged them wrongly until Jesus appeared to him on the road to Damascus and revealed the truth to him. And then he started his relationship with the living God and he started to preach the gospel in truth and love. Let's go back to the passage. But Jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground with his finger as though he did not hear. So when they continued asking him, he raised himself up and said to them, he who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Then those who heard it, being convicted by their conscience, went out one by one, beginning with the oldest, even to the last. And Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had raised himself up and saw no one but the woman, he said to her, Women, where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? She said, no one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Do you see how Jesus handled the situation? He handled it with love and understanding. 
He didn't say what she did was right because he said, go and sin no more. And what about those religious Pharisees? They wanted to kill her for the speck they saw in her eye. And Jesus, he just reminded them of the plank in their own eyes. You know, some people are so quick to judge and they don't do it in a loving and understanding way. They do it aggressively. Just watch some of the YouTube comments. And they are so aggressive, claiming to be Christians, but they are so aggressive. So when they judge people this way, it doesn't, it's, it's not from their spiritual nature. It comes from their fleshly, sinful natures. And you know, many of them put themselves on a, a pedestal of pride. And they feel better than other people because they are righteous and other people are sinful. And then those judge them and say, don't do this, don't do that, stop this, you will go to hell. They are full of fleshly religious pride, just like the Pharisees. It never changed. Over the centuries, it's the same. Those times in the Bible is the same today. 1 John 2 verse 16 says, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and listen to this, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Now, should we judge? Yes? No? Well, we can't just read one verse of the Bible. We have to study the whole Bible in a balanced way. But first, let's read the passage further where Jesus said not to judge. In verse 15, Jesus says, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. By their fruits you will know them. So in other words, we have to look at their actions, their deeds, to be able to judge. Is it right? Is it wrong? Can we trust them? So we have to make a judgment call. So Jesus is clearly saying that we have to judge. We have to discern between good fruit and bad fruit, between good and evil, right and wrong. Jesus says in John 7 verse 24, Do not judge according to appearance, but judge with righteous judgment. So it's very clear that you should not judge someone, not until you know scripture, number one. Number two, until you see the whole picture until you fully understand a situation and the person in that situation. And even then, it's very hard. You have to judge, but it's very hard because only God can really judge perfectly. Now let's look at the next verse. Proverbs 18 verse 13. He who answers a matter before he hears it, it is folly and shame to him. So it is very clear from these two verses that it is wrong to jump to conclusions, to make assumptions without seeing the whole picture. Let me use an example. The audience retention of all the videos on my channel is around 40 to 60%. That's how much people watch the whole video. So I know there's a lot of people who don't watch a full video, not all the way to the end. And then some of them would judge me. You see it in the comment section down below and then you understand, hmm, if this person would have only just continued to watch the video, they would understand because the judgment call they make is based on an assumption. They are jumping to conclusions. And some of them don't know scripture. Romans 2 verse 1 says, Therefore you are inexcusable, O man, whoever you are who judge. For in whatever you judge another, you condemn yourself. For you who judge practice the same thing. Again, the Bible warns us here about hypocrites. Have you ever heard a parent screaming at a child if they hear the child use a curse word, for example? But then the parent is the one that uses curse words all the time. Yeah, that's wrong. Hypocritical judgment is a sin. Now let's take a look at the next verse. Titus 3 verse 2 says, To speak evil of no one, to be peaceable, gentle, showing all humility to all men. Now let me ask you something. When you try to help someone, to stay on a narrow path? Do you do it in humility? Are you gentle? Do you do it in a peaceful way through the new spiritual nature? Or do you judge aggressively and with this kind of judgment where you are right and they need to listen? If you do it this way, you do it through the fleshly nature and you are no different than the Pharisees who did it to Jesus all the time. 
self-righteous judgment is wrong. James 4 verse 6 says, God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. <sighs> the pride of man. You know, there's a group of Christians out there, religious, traditional uh, Christians in a sense where they have not been reborn again. They don't have the Holy Spirit in them. They don't have a real relationship with God. And they go around and they judge people from a fleshly, prideful heart. And instead of bringing people to Christ to be a good smelling aroma, they push them away. And instead of acting through love, they act through their pride and their self-righteous judgment. Read with me Luke 18 verse 9 to 14. He spoke this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up to the temple to pray. One a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. God, I thank you that I am not like the other men, extortioners, unjust, idolaters, or even as this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the tax collector, standing afar off, would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. So Jesus makes this very clear. We cannot be self-righteous going around judging other people and think that we are better because we are not. We have all fall short of the glory of God. And Jesus came to save sinners, not those who are righteous. And you know what? Every time Jesus wanted to help people, it was always the religious people that judged him wrongly. Proverbs 19 verse 5 says, A false witness will not go unpunished, and he who speaks lies will not escape. If you judge someone wrongly, then you're falsely accusing them. It is a sin. And remember, Titus 3 verse 2 says, Speak evil of no one. Now, let me just say this. There's... <sighs> people are so sensitive today and a lot of people judge easily today. It's a lot of false judgments against a lot of good preachers out there. Of course, there are bad preachers, false prophets, but there are a lot of good ones. They get attacked openly time and time again. It's not easy to be a preacher. If you knew what it was like, if you could see just a day in a preacher's life, you would pray for them a lot more instead of judging. Because you know what? Our fight is not against each other, not against flesh, but against the devil and his powers. The devil is very, very intelligent and he can turn even the closest friends of a spiritual leader against him through assumptions, misunderstandings. 1 Peter 5 verse 8 says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So remember to pray for yourself, for protection, so that the devil won't easily deceive you to make the wrong judgment calls. And pray for the Christian leaders in your church, because they need it more than you know. So now you know that we should not judge wrongly, but we should judge between right and wrong. We should judge righteously. Jesus says in John 7 verse 24, Do not judge according to appearance, but judge with righteous judgment. And we have to help our brothers and sisters, those who stray from the narrow path. Galatians 6 verse 1 says, Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. So let's help each other in love. And remember, if your brother and sister tries to help you in love, to stay on the narrow road, don't just jump on your horse and be overly sensitive and defend yourself. I feel like the whole world is on sensitivity pulse these days. Everybody's so sensitive. No, when somebody tries to help you, act or react through the spiritual nature and think, okay, am I straying from the path? Let's go to the Bible. Let's read if it is true what my brother and sister are saying. 
2 Timothy 3 verse 16 to 17 says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. So you have to study God's word, his truth, to know, to discern between right and wrong, to be able to judge righteously. Always go back to the Bible because it is the only source of absolute truth that we have in this world. And some young people today, they say there's no such thing as absolute truth. Your truth is true. My truth is true. Well, even that statement then, if they say that absolute truth there's no such thing that even that statement cannot be true, right? The other thing is, no, absolute truth is absolute. Only our perception of the truth change. So if you stray from the path, from the truth of God's word, then God wants your brothers and sisters, your family, to come and help you to stay on the narrow road. Matthew 18 verse 15 says, If your brother sins against you, Go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he hears you, you have gained your brother. But if he will not hear, take with you one or two more, that by the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. And if he refuses to hear them, tell it to the church. But if he refuses even to hear the church, let him be to you like a heathen and a tax collector. Now this seems very harsh, but if the church is led by the Holy Spirit, then it is right. Because a person who seeks his own way, whose heart is so hard, and they don't want to listen to anyone, no brothers and sisters in Christ, they don't want to listen to the church, such a person is very dangerous. Especially if he starts rumors in the church, or if he starts to sp spread false doctrines in the church. A person like that can be used by the devil without him even knowing it, him or her. But okay, now you know what the Bible says about judging others. May God give you the wisdom and the insight to judge righteously in love when the time comes. Now, if you want to grow more spiritually in God, then watch one of these videos and I'll see you there. And remember, God loves you and I love you too. Bye. Take my life in